Hi everybody, it is June. This means that summer is well on its way. We've got a lot of summer bugs coming out and I thought I would give you some remedies to help you deal with those bites and stings and all those little everyday nuisances that we can have. And if you stick on around until the end, I have a couple of remedies that you could try to take prophylactically to keep yourself from getting bitten in the first place. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Raquel, and this is my channel where I talk about all things health and homeopathy related. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure and click that subscribe button, followed by the alert button so that you get notifications every time I post a new video, which is usually on Tuesdays. And if you like this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up below. And if you know anybody who could benefit from the information in this video, tell them, share it, spread the good news about how great homeopathy can be. Now, as always, the information in this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice for your specific situation. So, if you ever have a situation where you think you might need some medical care, be sure and contact the proper health professional and get the care that you need. All right, so the very first remedy is Ledum, and it is the star of the show for any sort of puncture wound, including bites and stings. And it is really the first thing to think of when you're dealing with a bite, even before you've had time to match any of your symptoms. It's okay to go ahead and take a dose of Ledum just for that initial assault. It's especially indicated where the thing that bit you may be a disease carry of some sort, like a mosquito or a flea or a tick it's always a good idea to take a dose of Ledum. Specific symptoms that um, are indicative of Ledum are the um, area around the wound may look bluish or purplish, it may have a white center, it might feel cold to the touch, and, um, and it will feel better for cold applications. Next is Staphysagria, and Staphysagria is great for any sort of stinging, intense itching or smarting pains. It's often um, indicated for those uh, bites or stings that really welt afterwards. Like some people really get welts after they get bitten by mosquitoes or especially a swarm of mosquitoes. If they end up with a lot of bites, they end up getting re really big welts. And Staphysagria is a really great one to think of for those situations. Um, and And Staphysagria is usually worse for cold applications and better for, for warm. So that kind of helps you distinguish between Ledum and Staph. A classic remedy for stings is Apis because it is, of course, made from the sting of a honeybee. And it is indicated for wounds that are red and hot. They might be swollen, they may have a white center, they're going to feel better for cold applications, they sting and burn, and um, they may develop uh, swelling that spreads or looks somewhat like hives, something along the lines of an allergic type reaction, um, apis can be really helpful for. I had a really cool experience with apis early on in my homeopathy journey, I had a landscaper who came over to do some work and he, the day he came over to do the work, his eye was almost swollen shut. And when I asked him what happened, there was quite the language barrier. I don't speak any Spanish. He spoke hardly any English. Um, but I was finally able to pick up that he got stung by bees, and he actually had several. He showed me several other welts that he had on his body. He had been stung by several bees. Big. Apparently, they were very big and black, I think, from what I got from the conversation. And I said, oh, I have something that might help you with that. Would you like to try it? And he said, sure, is it some sort of cream or something? And I said, no, it's this little teeny tiny, teeny, tiny white pill. And he kind of gave me one of these like looks like, oh dear, what am I gonna do? This crazy lady is gonna poison me, but I feel like I have to take it just to be polite. Well, he did take it. I gave him one dose and I left the house. I came back a couple of hours later, went out to check on them, offered them some water and I asked him how his eye was and he showed me and he could see the swelling was 
drastically reduced. He could open his eye now and see fully, and he was so excited. It was just so fun to see that, that really quick turnaround, and Apis is what I gave him. Next up is Urtica urns, and that is great for bites or stings that itch intensely, or they sting, or they burn. It's not necessarily swollen like Apis, and although it may develop a hive-like reaction as well, and a rash may develop from it. And it's a really great one to think of in mosquito bites. It's I actually used it really um, successfully for some fire ant bites. It just took the sting right out for me, which was really helpful. And if you're taking any trips to the beach, it is the number one remedy for jellyfish stings. So keep that in mind and take it with you. Hypericum is for those times where the pain is sharp and shooting, often shooting upward. There may be some numbness and tingling associated with it as well. Then we have Cantharis, which is really great for those that really burn. Burning sensation is the number one indication for the Cantharis. If you will remember from my burn video, it's also the number one remedy for burns. And because in homeopathy it is the symptom and the sensation that matters and not the cause, it is also really great for insect bites or stings that feel like they are burning. And then if someone is very shocked or intensely fearful after having um, received their bite, then aconite is the one to think of. It can be um, really well indicated for children especially who just become overwhelmed by the shock and the fear of, of the painful situation that they are now in and that can really help calm them down and bring them back into themselves. And the, um, the pain associated with aconite is often uh, cutting, stabbing, or burning. Oh, and there may be some numbness and um, some redness in the face. And finally, a remedy that's not so commonly um, available to have on hand, but it can be really helpful in really serious situations is carbolic acid. And that can be indicated in situations where somebody is anaphylactic, they're having trouble breathing, they have redness in the face, they may have a paleness around their mouth, their face, tongue, or throat may be swelling, and they may have um, in older situations, ulcers or blisters or even cases of sepsis, it can be indicated for. Now, of course, if you're having something like anaphylactic shock, you can take this remedy on the way to the hospital. Do not wait to seek attention when you're having a really severe reaction. Um, and if you don't have carbolic acid on hand, because it is kind of a, a less common remedy for people to have, then apis can be helpful in situations of anaphylaxis as well, because it does have that swelling symptom in there. So, I bet you're wondering, what are the remedies that I can take prophylactically before I ever even get bit, so I don't need these other remedies, so I don't have to deal with the stinging and the itching and the burning or whatever it is? Well, there are two. And they don't work for everybody, and some people have more success with one than with the other, so it's good to try them both, and some people don't get any help from it at all. But a lot of people do, so it's definitely worth a try because it, it's safe. There's no harmful side effects that you could get from these. So the first one is Leadum, and the second is Staphysagria. Staphysagria is typically more for um, mosquitoes. If you're really expecting mosquitoes, I would try Staphysagria first before Leadum. If you're trying to avoid things like ticks or lice, bed bugs, um, I would probably try uh, Leadum first, but I would try either one. If you try one and that one doesn't help, try the other one first before giving up. And the way that you do this is you take one dose of a 30C before you go out into whatever the situation is, your hike on the woods, for example. And then, um, and then you wait and you see if anything's biting you or not. If it seems to have an effect and you seem to not be getting bit, then you wait until you start getting bit again before taking the next dose. And you'll follow the same dosing and plussing method as you would in any other situation. I'll put the link to the video at the end. Um, that way you're still following the law of the minimum dose except for that very first um, remedy. That way you're not going to risk approving. You are waiting until 
your body is showing signs of needing the remedy again. Um, so that can be really helpful. If you use it and you have success or you don't have success, tell me about it. I want to hear about your experiences. I live in the desert. We don't have a whole lot of, of these things that I encounter on a regular basis. And I know because I used to live in the southeast, some other places have a lot a bigger issue with these bugs and would get a whole lot more benefit from it. So um, tell me. I want to hear your experiences and if it works for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get some benefit from it, that it can help give you relief from those bites and stings. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so that you get notifications. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you again next Tuesday. See you later.